Okay, JC, appreciate your time. JC, are you are you confident that these changes that you guys made in agreement with the league are going to to help in in trying to to mitigate this this new rash of uh, cases across the league? Yeah, it's been a it's been a busy a busy last seven days, really. Um, and you have to balance a lot of different things. You have to figure out kind of the best path forward. You have to figure out how we get out of you know the mess we were in last week across the league. Um, you got to listen to the membership. You have to understand where the NFL stands on the issues, and you have to try to find the the best landing spot for for how to accomplish all the things you want to accomplish. So, um, I think what's clear, if we just start from the beginning, is you know our position since July was that daily testing was the best option, um, and we've been pretty adamant about that. And I think if you look at what we did last year and the amount of positives we had last year versus this year, I think it's tough to deny that daily testing wasn't a huge uh, component of our success last year. Um, the NFL's never been a supporter of daily testing. They weren't a supporter of daily testing last year. Uh, we had to force their hand to get daily testing last year. Um, you know, fast forward now of multiple months into the, into the season, we have the issues we were facing last week. And, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out where everybody stands on the issues. Uh, our membership felt like, you know, the vast majority of them have done everything uh, that's been asked of them. They've gotten vaccinated. They feel like they didn't want more testing. They didn't want more stringent protocols. The majority of our membership wanted to begin living, you know, in this pandemic as a new variant has come out that's more mild, um, though more contagious. That was the position of the majority of our membership. Um, However, we still had a minority of our membership that that don't just want to walk into buildings without any checks or balances of, of what's going on inside. Of them. So it's obviously not an easy um, you know, balancing act to figure out how to go go forward through. So knowing that we tried to come up with the best path forward to provide options to everybody. We obviously had the opt out um, and then we obviously you know, provided ways for people to make their choices of how they wanted to live moving forward. Uh, unless you're in a current outbreak, there are no um, heavy restrictions on the protocols, but we've provided, obviously, anybody can wear a mask in the facility. Um, anybody can accept virtual meetings. Uh, those are optional for any player to make an individual decision. If they want to begin spending less time at the facilities for the rest of the season, you have that choice. Um, you have the option to test every day. You have the option for take-home tests for your families. Um, you know, our, our goal in the end was providing well, all groups of players, their options for how they wanted to move forward the rest of the season. In terms of uh, you're seeing across the NHL, the NHL is shutting down. Uh, the NBA has postponed more games tonight. Are you confident you guys can avoid that? And did you think, I know you guys didn't get much help from it, um, JC, in terms of guys coming back asymptomatic or, or, or testing out over the weekend, but are you confident there won't be any more postponements this season? I, I don't know about that. As like you said, it, it's been a, a trying week or, or two weeks for everybody. Um, you know, this is a new variant. This is, you know, when, when uh, COVID first happened, we had six months to kind of figure it out and figure out a path forward. And in this instance, we had about six days to figure it out. Um, so it, it's not an, an easy answer to make. Um, you know, last week, to go to your question, the, the issue wasn't about um, how many guys we got back. You know, our, our position as a union is that we fight for wages, benefits, and working conditions. And we don't worry about competitive balance. We don't worry about standings. We don't uh, worry about roster composition. We worry about those three things. So the NFL's position last week was that those three games were going to be canceled. They weren't going to be pay, uh, played. And if they weren't played, then nobody on either team was going to be paid. Um, that's obviously an issue for us as a union when, uh, you know, over 18% of our player population was at risk of not getting paid last week. Right. So our position was that we needed to make sure all games are played in order for our guys to get paid. Um, and that was our position. We took a vote with the executive committee of the union, which voted unanimously that our position needed to be that games need to be rescheduled and not canceled. Uh, and we pushed the league for that uh, resolution. Thanks, man. Thank you, Tom. Next is Dale Ryder. Yeah, JC, without revealing any confidential information, understanding the sensitivity of this, as a member of a team, though, that had an outbreak uh, last week and was directly affected by this, are you satisfied with the uh, way everything was handled? 
And, uh, you know, from your perspective, is there any way to mitigate uh, the, the outbreak, if you will, so many, you know, 25 plus people tested positive within the organization? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the, you know, the, the proof that weekly testing was never a, a successful model, especially now with this new variant. Uh, weekly testing allows like, you know, we've been talking about for months now allows the virus to spread all throughout the week. And then you get to Monday and it lets you know, hey, you've got a huge problem on your hands, you have to bail yourself out of it. So it, it was never a model that was going to succeed, especially now that we have a more contagious variant out there. Um, so when it comes to, you know, are, are, are we happy? It's, it's what we were, you know, what our rules were at the time, and then figuring out how to get get past it. Um, so it, it's, there's no good options. It's, you know, last week was a lot of figuring out the two issues. Like I said, one, how do we get through this week? How do we figure out this season? As you guys saw, we went back to the intensive protocols temporarily. Um, that was the decision we made because we had three teams that games were very much in risk or trending to being canceled. And we still had other, te uh, other teams testing positive, putting more games in doubt. We knew it wasn't popular amongst the players to roll back the protocols, but we knew we needed to buy ourselves time uh, in order to get ahead of it and avoid any other problems that last week before we could come to a better solution moving forward. So, um, you know, as we've seen in other sports leagues, there's no you know, perfect answer. There's no, um, this is still an evolving situation. So uh, in, in the end, I think we've done all, all we can do to, um, you know, figure out last week and then move forward. Are there going to be further adjustments to the protocols or is this how the players in the NFL have agreed to operate the rest of the way? Are you anticipating that you're going to have to get your heads back together and modify further? I don't think you can ever say you, you're not going to do that. I mean, this is something as we've seen for two years now, I, I think you always leave the options to make, make changes if, if you need, uh, if you need to do it. But as of now, this is how we're moving forward. Thank Daryl Scott Petrick. Go ahead. Hey, JC. Um, I thought I saw in one of the memos from the league that, you know, there are no gatherings anymore. You know, players couldn't go to like basketball games, which reminded me of last year. Is that not the case for the rest of the season? Yeah. So that was when we rolled back to the intensive protocols in order to make sure we, we settled everything down last week. And now we've moved forward. Um, only if your team's in the middle of an outbreak, are you under those intensive protocols? If not, you're in protocols very similar to the beginning of this year and how we've, we've gone forward before the beginning of last week. Okay. And then obviously you were proponent of the daily testing. So the fact that now it's targeted testing, um, you, I'm assuming you don't feel as safe, like being around the team as you would have even when there was weekly testing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I've been boosted. I've, you know, I'm vaccinated. Um, I will be wearing a mask around the facility. Uh, I will be choosing to meet virtually. I think, you know, this week we'll continue meeting virtually anyways, but I'll be taking my meetings virtually. That's just something I, I, I'd like to do to feel uh, more comfortable. I know there's a lot of guys around the league that will, will make that choice as well. Uh, and that was really our goal was providing guys choices on how to get through the rest of the season um, I've said it before, our membership is a, a microcosm of, of the country. You know, we have, we have people that, that are ready to, to move forward, that have done everything uh, that's been asked of them, have got, gotten vaccinated, um, made those decisions, and now they, they want to start feeling like, you know, I know what, I, I'm not at risk of, of serious illness because of my vaccine status. I've done what they've said, and now, like, I'm ready to go back to somewhat normalcy. Uh, and then we still have guys who, who don't want to get COVID and still want to live a, a more cautious lifestyle. And now um, everybody has those choices. Is it target? Lastly, is the target testing? Do you feel like that's legit? Like the league's still going to be looking for players or is the goal just to have as few positive tests as possible? No, I, th I think we saw yesterday, we still had uh, quite a few and, and we're still, I mean, you know, the, the message was we're not testing anymore. We're, we're still targeted testing, which is a, a random draw of players and staff through the building. We're still testing the high risk uh, contacts. Uh, we still have voluntary testing. We still have testing for unvaccinated and we still have testing for symptomatic. So we're still doing quite a bit of testing. And you know, yesterday and the day before, we still had you know, quite a few positives that we have to continue to monitor around the league um, to make sure everything goes accordingly and everybody stays safe. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Dan Lobby, go ahead. Hey, JC. Um, I'm just kind of just wondering what was last week like for you, I guess, personally, as you're getting ready to play a football game, 
you're dealing with all this stuff, having to, I, I know you've been doing this for a couple of years now, but, but what is that week like for you um, with some of the uncertainty you're dealing with and also your job as an NFL center and also NFLPA president? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I don't pay my cell phone bill by the minute <laughs> anymore or else I, I, I would be, uh, be in trouble financially, but it, it, was a, it was a busy week. It was, um, it was tiring and I think it's, you know, this, is, this has been exhausting on everybody and it's been difficult on everybody. Um, you know, we had to make very difficult decisions last week with not a lot of time to make them. Um, I give a ton of credit to, you know, our staff and our other player leaders who uh, had to be involved in these discussions and, and try to make the best decisions moving forward. Um, but it was, it was definitely a, a very, very long week, probably the, the longest, the longest week of my, of my tenure in that position. And then, there, you know, there was obviously, you know, when the game gets moved, um, you know, certainly, you know, some Raiders players were not happy and, and there were some people who took some shots as far as like you being on the grounds and also being the, the NFLPA president. I guess, how do you kind of respond to that? Do you have conversations with, with anyone from the Raiders or anything like that? Yeah, I reached out to a couple guys on the Raiders. I, I, I think the the thing that people didn't understand was I was fighting for the same thing for the Browns players as I was for the Raiders players, and that's to get paid. Um, you know, that, that's my job as, as president. I was elected by the players to represent all players. Um, and, I, and I don't think um, everybody was fully aware of just how close those games were to being canceled. Um, and I don't think everybody was fully aware that if canceled, they weren't going to get paid. Both teams weren't going to get paid. Um, I think that was news to some people. Uh, and once they understood that fact, I think guys started to realize what exactly we as a union were fighting for. And again, I don't make I don't make decisions by myself. We had the, the executive committee, like I said, voted unanimously to make that same decision, which we went to the league to fight for. So um, we had everybody kind of give their opinion on what we needed to do moving forward. And we executed those goals. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Tony Grossi, you're next. Hi, JC. Uh, would those canceled games have been forfeitures? I mean, that's, that's not a, that's not a decision or a, the answer for for us that would be for the league on how they were going to handle it in the end we we didn't want either way if the game's not played whether it's canceled forfeited or whatever you know word you want to use for it um the guys weren't going to get paid and that's what we were concerned about so so you as president didn't know whether they'd be forfeited or not uh they were going to be canceled uh, again that's not my concern uh i don't worry about standings i don't worry about record I don't worry about those things as president. I worry about making sure our guys are paid. Um, and that was my concern. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Tony. Nate Ulrich, go ahead. Hey, JC. Um, as union president, um, what's it like when, you know, you're, you're advocating for daily testing, but the majority of, uh, as you said, your membership wants to go another way? Um, and, you know, just can you explain to people kind of how you view that situation and, you know, your obligation to maybe, uh, you know, represent your entire membership, even if it doesn't necessarily align with your views? Yeah, I think, you know, my, my job as an elective representative is to, you know, represent all players. Um, and that doesn't mean they always agree with what I think is best. Um, that's what a lot of the phone calls last week were reaching out to players across the league to see what they wanted, to see what their locker rooms wanted. Um, and as the country is, there's a, a lot of different opinions on, on what's best moving forward. And, you know, we have a wide ranging group of people on, on beliefs of, of how we go forward the rest of the season and moving forward. Um, and then it's my job to sit back with all that information and, and find a path forward that gives everybody what they, they want or, or something they want. Um, and, and that's obviously not easy in these situations where um, there's no answer that gives everybody 100% what they want. Um, but that's, that's our job as a union is, is representing what our players want, you know, working with experts still to provide them the information and, and then executing what they ask of us. Um, it's, it's not an, an easy job. Um, but I think in the end, we, we did do what guys wanted to do. And then last Thursday, you know, we talked to Miles Garrett on Zoom, and he was saying that it was a confusing day. Uh, first, they were saying we we're going to test, and then we weren't. And Baker Mayfield uh, had some tweets aimed at the NFL. Um, what went down last Thursday in Berea from your perspective, and what was your involvement in that? 
Yeah, I mean, all of last week, especially as we got to the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, was a, a, a hectic, a hectic couple days uh, as we were going back and forth, league and PA. Like I said, we were, we were, we're trying to balance two things. What, what do we do with the current situations we had at three clubs? And then what do we do moving forward? Um, our position at the PA was if we have an ongoing outbreak, we can't, we can't you know, stop that. We have to continue to see our way through that uh, and make sure we, we provide all the checks that we need to. Um, in the end, that's, that's what we ended up doing. Thank you, Nate. We have time for one more. Jake Trotter. Yeah, JC, I was actually going to ask you about the, the confusion with the testing last Thursday where uh, you guys tested after practice um, it, instead of in the morning. And, uh, you, know, you know, Miles Garrett was talking to us. He didn't understand that. Um, and I, I think you were explaining it just now. But it, it, if there's any more you can elaborate on, uh, because, you know, players were tweeting about it. It just seemed like there was a lot of confusion. And you're kind of in a weird position because you're both a player for that team and the NFLPA president. Yeah. And, and again, I think I, talk, I, I think I'll, I'll talk about it again about the, you know, the it's everybody was was frustrated and exhausted and trying to figure their way through it. Obviously, we were we were frustrated as a team. Uh, we were frustrated as a player body. Um, everybody was was on angst and we, and we were doing a, a ton of work behind the scenes trying to figure our way out of the situation we were in. So in the end, uh, there, there definitely was some some confusion um, going back and forth. But in the end, we did what we were supposed to do. Um, everybody tested and we made sure we, we continued to see the, the outbreak through to the end. Do you think if you had tested in the morning that maybe that would have spared a couple of guys because you had positives running through the weekend, or is that just impossible to, to know? It's, it's tough. It's tough to know again with the incubation period. I'm, I'm not sure how related, um, our positives were, um, especially with players. I know we had a couple, you know, pop that day. Those wouldn't be from any exchanges um, that day. And the next day is usually pretty, you're pretty sure those aren't from um, any interactions the previous day. So um, I'd have to go back and look and, and, and check the, the data on that, but I, I'm not sure many are related. We, I mean, we did a really good job of spacing out. Our lockers were moved out to the field house with plenty of space in between. We changed, we went out outside. What we have seen, you know, for the last two years is we haven't found an instance of transmission outdoors, you know, while playing. Um, so I, I think, you know, we weren't in the meet, we weren't in the building meeting or, or sitting around or in the locker room. So I, I think overall, even testing after practice, it's not like we were in an unsafe environment before those tests. 